So good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Welcome to this edition of Soccer Hub Talks. My name is Ricardo Balbeira. I'm the CEO and founder of Soccer Hub. As many of you already know, Soccer Hub is an online education platform for soccer scouts, soccer analysts, so, well, soccer experts. Just visit us and get to know a bit more what kind of offers do we have. Um, so as you know, this is an online uh, and live uh, webinar. So you will be able to ask questions to our speaker. You just have to introduce um, the question on the chat box so we can select some to be asked to the speaker. Um, also, I would like you to um, write on the chat box some information about yourself, such as the job and the country that you are based in, okay? Please write that information on the chat box because it's something important for us, for us be able to uh, adapt a bit our conversation to your specific needs. So um, today, Soccer Hub Talks, Soccer in Africa, the evolution, it's the part two of these uh, uh, debates. Um, on the first one, we had Emmanuel Amunique. Now we'll have um, Finidi George. Um, and um, the panel will be, as usual, moderated by Nuno Milheiro. Hello, guys. Good afternoon. Finidi, thank you for accepting our invitation. I'm going to leave you guys speaking for a bit. Okay. Bye bye, Nuno. Bye bye, Finidi. Thank you, Ricardo. Hello, Finidi, first of all, and hello, everybody. Thank you for being with us again. And uh, I'm going to do an introduction, as people know. And uh, today we have a great guest that is one of the most admired and respected soccer players from Africa, continent, and not only, of course. He played for clubs like Ajax, Real Betis, Ipswich Town and uh, Mallorca and um, where he finished his, his player's career. He also played 62 matches for the Nigerian national team, particip participating in two World Cups and four African Nations Cup editions, winning one of them. And then Infinity, after, if you can confirm that everything is right, I believe so. I do well my research, but, uh, but, but if you can confirm everything. Um, among other trophies, he... yeah, everything is right so far, so far, but I still have more <laughs> because you had a, you have a long and successful career, and um, and uh, and uh, that's why. So, among other trophies, and I'd like um, to make a special mention you won a Champions League, European Super Cup, International Cup for Ajax, Inter Intercontinental Cup that now is the world, the, the world, um. Um, team, it's uh, the world club um, the trophy. So he was he was the world world champion of the club, and um, he was he was part of one of the best squads ever uh, of Ajax, together with with players like Edwin van der Sar, uh, Frank Ronald, and Frank de Boer, uh, Frank Rijkaard, the Arlit Man, and Edgar Davids, Clarence Seedorf, Cano, Patrick Leivert, Mark Overmars. Just to mention some of them, and uh, Infinity was crucial. And he, he played; he had 42 appearances in that season, scoring nine goals, and uh, he also won three um, leagues in Holland uh, for Ajax. This part, as as you know, as I'm, I'm a soccer scout, and I had the privilege to to follow your career. And this is my opinion. Infinity was a very elegant player, very elegant and very very intelligent player inside the pitch, always correct and respecting the intervenience on the game. And one thing that I would like to add more is like I, what I was saying previously to, to Finidi. I don't know what happened because it looks exactly the same like like at that time. So you need to tell us your <laughs> secret. <laughs> and, uh, and he played most of his career as a right midfielder uh, with a very distinct characteristics uh, of the other players because he's uh, one, well, he was 189. Um, centimeters, one, one meter eighty-nine. I believe you are still. You didn't grow, but uh, I believe you are still one eighty-nine. What is not usual for a right? You are not a right winger, more right midfielder. So, um, so as you can see, we are in the presence of a football legend, and uh, so the ones that didn't have the privilege to watch him to pl playing, like I did, please search for his videos, and you will be delight delighted for sure. So thanks, thanks, Finiti, for accepting and uh, our invitation and uh, uh, straight away because uh, as soon as I contacted you, you've been very open to to accept it. So it's a pleasure. So 
um, and the people are here to to listen to you, not to listen to me. So so let's start. So is the information all correct? <laughs> Everything right? Yes, 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 yes. All the informations are correct. Are okay. Okay. And um, yeah, I think you have good information. So. Okay, that's yeah. It's the information I I was myself. Well, I knew all this information, but uh, this is this is unbelievable career. So congratulations for your career. So um, like thank I said, you very much. thank no, thank you for for being here and especially to share your knowledge. That is always important to have people like you sharing with with people that want actually to learn. And um, can you please tell us to start? what you are doing professional at the moment are you still linked to 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 football yeah i was um, doing some coaching with um, the youth team of mayoka well, that was uh, i think um, 2016 okay. 2016 2017 and um, at the moment um, i'm still waiting to have uh, something new okay but you are still are you still to go to, to to keep in to stay in football yeah of course you have your your other things but uh, but you you still want to be involved in football correct yes 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 that is what i know best and i think um, yeah if um, that opportunity comes i will i will take it you know of course so, yeah. um, i'm just waiting to see what's 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 there for me yeah of course and uh, and football needs needs people like you so for sure it will come the, the right opportunity so um, if, uh, can you share with us how everything started for you uh, was was it football always your passion tell us a bit more um, how it started that passion for football and um, and when did you realize that you could become a professional football player Hello. Yeah, hello. Can you can I you hear me? I can hear you. Can you okay. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. okay. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, I repeat. Um, it. yeah, I actually I was not my brothers, my siblings were were the football players, you know, when we were growing up. So uh, I like football, but um I was not, you know, being a young a young um, boy I was not um, playing in any club, you know, I was just watching football and uh, and um, I liked it so much that um, I tried to join them, my siblings, and because they were already in the club, you know, I joined them for a training session just to watch. And um, I think the day I went to them, there was, um, they were short of one player. Somebody didn't come to training, so the coach saw me and he, he, he told me, can you play football? I said, yes, I can play. So, okay, you you join us today, you train with us. So after the training, and they were impressed and um, they told me to come whenever I have time. So that was how everything started. So just because one guy was missing, so luckily... Yes, for us, yes. Right? Somebody, somebody, somebody was missing for... For that day's training, and um, yeah, fortunately for me, I was there with my siblings, and uh, they gave me that opportunity to train with them, and um, that was how it started. You know, that, uh, that. after that, I started going to train with them, and um, the 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 coach felt that um, I was good, and they they gave me a contract. That was my first. I was still going to school, so that was my first contract. Um, yeah, with uh, Nigerian Ajib Football Club. That's that's amazing, you know. Like, uh, that's an amazing story. So you were at the right place at the right time. So exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, that that's that's amazing. So, but what about the position that you always played? Did you start as a as a right? Uh, were you first of all? Were you already like at all at all? Uh, kids or or you just started to grow later yeah on? yeah I, I i i had a good height you know okay. i was not uh, because i was still growing then but um my height was good enough and um, i was actually a midfield player 
you know. Yeah. The holding holding midfield or you know one of the three positions in the midfield. You know yeah. that was how uh, that was my position. That was where I was really good at. You know when I was growing up and uh, until I was converted to the right side. You know, and yeah. that was that was later part when I got to the national team. Yeah. The the the, the coach that is from Holland. You know, uh, you know, converted me from midfield to the right side. You know, because of my speed, my awareness of the game. So, uh, you know, and, and the rest is history. That's true. That's completely true. So it comes to my memory all all those matches that uh, I've been watching. Mainly, mainly, of course, like uh, when when I think about you, it's uh, the Ajax shirt, also Betty's shirt, and also of course the Super Eagles. And uh, and that World Cup also, like like I was saying to Emmanuel Amonique, that for me was the best World Cup ever uh, in '94 yeah. in the in the USA. That was amazing. And uh, and where where Nigeria have unbelievable players, you know. So you guys had uh, had a great 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 squad. And um, yeah. yeah. So have you ever imagined when? Of course, like like you said. Um, one guy was missing for sure. You're not imagine that you will represent the national team and that you will win a Champions League, you know, or or to to represent your country in a World Cup. That I think is the top of what a player can reach. But but after that, uh, when you started to play for a club in Nigeria, have you ever thought that you could reach such a high level, such, such a top level like you did, or it was something that was happening naturally? Um, I think it was um, something that was happening naturally. I didn't know I was going to even make it to the national team. I was just playing for 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 fun, you know, not even thinking about the the money and um, other things that are, are there for football. You know, I just um, played the game because I loved the game, and um, everything just happened naturally. Um, I could see I was moving from one place to the other and they were contracting me. I just felt um, it's, it's interesting because <laughs> it's like every other job, you know, when yeah. the, the people or clubs are looking for you, that means you're doing something good. Yeah, for sure. And, um, that was how... I, I I took it, you know, uh, one step at a time, and um, everything just worked out um, till I got to the national team. That was when I knew this could be something important. Maybe I I could make a living out of it. Yeah, but you never put like that's interesting because in these days we we see that many many players, young players, they don't um, they put a lot of pressure on themselves and they don't enjoy the to play. They they are only seeing the outcome or the the money or uh, especially and uh, you are an example on that case because uh, like you said you were playing for the it was happening naturally you know like and you were playing for the joy for yeah. for the game, you know and that that's the most the fundamental thing in life that you, that uh, that you should do yeah. and for sure that that was the first time and uh, the last time that you've been chosen because one guy was missing for sure. Uh, you didn't have the career and you didn't go to the clubs that you went because one guy was missing. No, you, you went because you were fantastic and uh, and you were like the, the 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 piece of the puzzle that was was missing in those in those teams, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's very important among other things, of course. So how it came across to you after? So of course you've been playing in Nigeria and uh, how it came across to you the opportunity. To play in Netherlands, and uh, what was your first reaction when you when you, you knew that uh, Ajax was looking after you and wanted to to sign you? Um, I, I didn't know. You know, when um, I was in the national team, normally we go to Holland, yeah, to the Netherlands to do training training camp before major tournament. We were there. Before the Senegal, I think Senegal 92 Nations Cup, we were in Holland also for training camp. So a while over there, we were playing friendly games. And, um, you know, Ajax have scouts all over. And uh, they came, they saw a few games. And um, I was lucky also that um, the coach was uh, from Holland. 
and um, mm -hmm. they got all the information they needed and um, yeah they, they 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 invited me for trials and then um, I went there for five weeks and then um, they gave me a contract I did so well that uh, they gave me a contract yeah but what is what is amazing is like that you uh, as I can see, you started to play straight away on the first team, you know? Like, uh, you played the first season, you played already, like, 40 matches around, no? Uh, in the first team. Yeah, um, actually, no, but, yeah, but actually I was not, I was not signed to play. I think I was, I was very, very lucky to be at the right place at the right time, you know? Um, okay. At Ajax, I think that's the second time it happened. Oh, okay. <laughs> also, because... Uh, uh, um, it, the second time it happened, and um, I I was signed to to play in the second team, and um, yeah, uh, somebody who was playing for the first team got injured, and got but, um, I think ankle injury and. Um, yeah, Vanga Vanga called me to to play, and um, yeah, ever since I I, I played that game, I, I, they did not take me out of the team. You know, so yeah. I was again lucky to be at the same at the, at, at the club at the right time, and um, yeah, it's unfortunate that the player got injured, but um, I was happy that um, <laughs> I got my chance also. You know? Of course. What is great, it, so, it was a massive, yeah, and yeah. So you were lucky again, but the luck is 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 a factor. Also, you need to be there, like 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 you said, you know, um, you need to be yeah, again. You have to, you have to yeah. work hard and um, wait for your opportunity, and um, that opportunity came, and I grabbed it, and uh, that was that was it. After that, I I started playing and doing what I I know best, and. Uh, it was difficult for even Vanga to take me out when the player recovered from his injury. You know, so of it was it, everything went everything went so fast and um, yeah, I'm happy. I thank God for it. Of course, and and we are talking about the top manager. Of course, at the time he was starting also, but uh, but uh, for sure he didn't have any problem to take you out if you if he had to take you, you know. He's, he's, a, he's a coach oh, that you know. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. So uh, it yeah, it's a top, it's a top coach, and uh, but I, I worked very hard. I tried to do the best I can, and uh, my best I think was good enough. So uh, it was difficult, you know, for him to to even take me out because I was not I was not supposed to be a starter in that team. Of course, you know they they, they bought me, uh, they gave me a contract to learn. And um, see how I can fit in in, the, in the, maybe my second year. I try to uh, learn the learn the, the Dutch way, uh, adapt to the culture, and uh, but uh, everything went fast. I adapted so fast the way they wanted me to play, and um, yeah, at the end of the day, I, I I became you know a starter, and I played almost every game while I was in Ajax. That's true. So that that must be. It was a, an unbelievable experience for sure. So how how it was your adaptation to the? Um, was it hard? Was was uh, what was the hardest aspect of your adaptation? Um, um I think uh, I think the cold winter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, for sure. Because the the winter. Because, is not uh, I didn't know all my life I've been living in Nigeria and uh, it's good weather, very warm. And um, I got to Holland, the temperature was good, like in the summertime, um, autumn, it was okay. Then um, the winter set in and uh, I was like, wow, this is, this is not for me. Yeah. You know, that, that was the only time I couldn't play you know, in the winter period. And uh, but I, I was, I was lucky enough that, uh, um, I was called during the winter time. I was invited for the national team, so I was away also. <laughs> so you were again in the warm weather. <laughs> yes, I was. I was with Nigeria national team preparing for the Nations Cup 1994. So when the winter came, 
I was gone, you know. So I didn't really experience, you know, the whole the whole winter season. So when I came back, it was almost in February, and the weather was much better, and um, I could start playing again. Yeah. So if it was if it was now, you know, back in those days, of course there were no phones with a, with a camera or WhatsApp or whatever. But I can imagine if that day there was WhatsApp, you were just sending pictures of you in the in the warm weather in in Nigeria and yeah. your your colleagues yeah. training in the cold. <laughs> So, yeah, 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 of course, of course, of course. You know, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. a different time. Yeah, different time, and uh, yeah, uh, but this is good. You know, there's uh, there's been a lot of changes. Yeah, from that time till now, even football has changed a lot. A so, lot. yeah, I mean, life there must be changes. You know, for the betterment of things. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, this is it's it's always I like always to. Um, to, to talk a bit, you know, about the career, uh, the fantastic careers you had, and, uh, and and we keep moving, and we are going to talk, of course, about African football now, but uh, but just to to talk a bit more about about your career also, and this is also related to to now. It's still, you know, it's still something that is up to date. That um, is the fact of the adaptation. Do you believe that the fact that uh, in the Netherlands English is a language that is spoken by the large majority of, of the population? They learn English uh, since since young, in young age, and their English is perfect. And also in Nigeria, also um, you are English speakers. So yeah, do you um... No, I, I, personally, I didn't have that language uh, problem. That's why, yeah. Because uh, most of my teammates could speak in, they could they they could speak English very well. So, uh, yeah, um, it was it was easy, you know, to communicate with the players and. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I was yeah, saying. Uh, we think it was easier because yeah. because Holland, you know, it was easier because in Holland everybody speaks speaks English. So so for you, for sure. Um, it was exactly. easier, and it makes makes a, a big difference, a different impact. And also, do you think it was um, it was also a, a factor that uh, was helping you that you went to a club that, uh, if not the best, but probably the best academy in the world, you know, and gives opportunities to young players to 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 develop their style, teaching them, giving them the chance to improve. And um, it was also a big plus. That is a club that usually is patient to, to teach. Uh, and it's not only to put in players and then if they don't do well, they just take them out. Do you think the circumstances about the language, the, the country, and also the, the club itself, it was, a, it was something that was completely suitable for you? You went to the right club at, you know, in the right time? Hello, I can't yeah, yeah. hear you. Okay, can you hear me now, Finidi? Can you yes, hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Ah, okay, so so like I was yeah. saying, do you, do you believe that um, because as we know, Ajax gives the opportunity to young players. Ajax also have a great academy. The factor of the language, like I was saying, they they like to teach the players, give opportunity to the players, you know, to grow, to develop their own style. Do you think that was also helpful? Yeah, it, uh, yes, of course, it's, um, it's helpful because, um, you know, they give they give young players the opportunity, uh, you know, even help the parents in getting jobs, you know, so they do all lot of, uh, a lot of stuff, you know, to really make sure players, young players exactly, or especially uh, feel at home, you know, so... It's a good thing. The academy is is working. Um, other countries, other other football clubs, they've emulated um, the, the the Ajax way on them. Even Barcelona also. If you see Barcelona yeah. today, it's Ajax. Yeah. You know. So um, yeah, it's a good thing. Good academy. Good way of working. Giving players the opportunity to grow and then um, teach them what what is uh, yeah what they need to know as football players. So 
Um, the academy is running, is functioning very well, and uh, see a lot of players are coming up from there. Last year, they sold young players from the academy that played for the first team also to Barcelona, uh, to Juventus, and uh, this year also, I think uh, they've sold one or two players also. Yeah, when the, the academy, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they are, they, are, they are doing well. Ajax is coming back. They are, they've, they've worked very, very hard to come back to be the best again in the, in the, the, in the academy world. So, yeah, they just have to do be a better job in the first team. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and they are doing great. And, and it's good for football that they are back, you know, because Ajax is, is, a, is a reference, you know, for, for all of us. So yeah. go, going a bit more to the subject, to today's subject, um, do you think that, um, in your opinion, um, there was a massive improvement in African soccer in the last 30 years, Nigerian, Nigerian uh, football in particular, or do you think that, uh, that much more could be done so far, in your opinion? Um, well, like... Um... And African football grew uh, some time. Uh, in our time, it, it grew a lot. Later, um, yeah, um, the, 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 the football didn't grow anymore. Um, you know, it's like ups and downs, you know. Uh, we have to be consistent. That is what um, I think is lacking in African football. Um, the upbringing of players. You know, uh, try to work, you know, like we just talked about Ajax. There should be a long-term program, you know, yeah. to bring up players and then um, sustain it, you know. Um, you know, you see uh, African players try to, to play at the best, maybe for maybe five, six, seven, eight years. After that, there will be a drop, you know. Um, after that, uh, young players are coming up again. You know, we have to be consistent to be able to 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 compete at the highest level, and um, and that is not that is not happening. You know, that is not happening too often. So yeah. we have to we have to do a better job. We have to you know try to make sure the the, the leagues in every country in Africa is much better, and then so that uh, when players are going abroad. They go there to get the best contract and uh, be able to compete. Yeah, for sure, definitely. And and we spoke also about about that with with Emmanuel Amonik last week, and uh, it was also very interesting. And uh, that's why, for, because this this um, we are doing this series of um, of um, talks, um, webinars about African football. Because uh, myself, I believe also that the future of football is in Africa. And like like Jose Mourinho also said. Few years ago, you know, like the the future of football and the the talent, especially it's 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 in Africa. You know, just many things need to change. So, what do you think that um, yeah, yeah yeah that is blocking the African uh, football growth? Um, do you think that um, that in thirty years, so many talent players coming from Africa con continent, as we know, you know, for many years they are coming every year. Um, don't you think that uh, we should see an African nation going far in a World Cup, for example, going a bit further um, in all these years? Because um, because there is so much talent, and um, and 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 when it comes to the World Cup, we are all uh, supporting in a way, you know, African team to go. I think it's the it's the next thing to 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 achieve. I wouldn't say to win straight away. But but at least you know to reach the semi-finals or or the final that will be great. Yeah, the the the, the, the problem we we have uh, is um, um, the tactical the tactical part of it, uh, and be patient. You know, African teams always want to rush into because uh, we, we like the fast fast game. You know, fast football. And uh, when you 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 play that fast football, sometimes you run out of out of uh, positions, and um, that is where all these top teams will punish you. You know, yeah. and uh, I think we have to we have to work tactically 
mm, well because the players we have, but uh, the, the problem we, we've always had is the tactical part of it. You know, and uh, if we can if we can work on that, I think uh, we can we can beat any team. African teams can win in 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 this tournament, but the problem is. When when we get to this, you know, uh, the African football where you know it's open, you know, very open, open football, and uh, yeah, uh, some teams will just sit back and try to to play on the counter, you know. So I think we have to change that mentality, try to play tactically um, sound in these games, and then uh, yeah, get the best out of it. I think that is what is lacking. The tactics is lacking. Not tactics in the game, but um, the players. I think the players knowing when to 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 uh, to play faster, mm-hmm. when to play slower. You know, this this Take little things are what yeah. is really decision. Decision. That is what really holding yeah. us back. Yeah. Yes. 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 If we can, if we can do that, I think uh, we can match. We can match uh, other countries. You know, because uh, uh, I saw what Ghana did in 2010. You, you, you know, uh, they, they would have gone, they would have gone further, but um, yeah, they missed the penalty, and um, you know, yeah. all sort of things happen in that game, and um, they couldn't, they couldn't get further. But um, yeah, uh, we'll see, we'll see how things is going to change. Uh, we'll be working towards. Uh, yeah, making progress. I don't know uh, what generation of players that can can win the World Cup for Africa, but uh, yeah, they just have to work towards it and uh, tactically knowing what uh, what to really want, you know, in big tournaments like that. Yeah, but don't don't you think in that in that aspect? I agree completely with you, of course. And but don't you think that former top African players like yourself, for example, could have a key role? in the African football growth, because your experience, not only playing for the national team, but also your experience playing in Europe, where you have also that tactical knowledge, so you can integ- integrate or contribute for, for develop. I can't hear the, you. Um, can, can you. Can you hear me now? Can you, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Sorry, guys, we are having some technical problems. In the meantime, guys, ask your questions also. Um, okay, I, Mario, here, I can see your question in here. I'll ask in a, in a bit, okay, because we are going to approach the um, also that part a bit further on. Let's hope that um, Infinity can come back because the conversation has been very interesting. So please ask your question, guys. And um, yeah, especially about the subject, the subject. So, Finid is back. Hopefully. Okay. Ah, okay, you are back. Okay. So, so like, uh, can you hear me well, Finid? Can you hear me well? Hello. Can you can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, perfect. So, like like I was saying, so do you think that former top African players like you can have a key role in the African football role? So uh, growth, sorry, because uh, do your experience, you know, um, you had experience playing for the national team, you had experience playing in Europe, you have that tactical knowledge that that you said before that is 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 missing is lack. Is lacking, and um, do you think that you guys that been on the top level can develop a good work back then, or or back there, or not? Yeah, yeah, of course. I think um, if they they give us that unity, and uh, we'll be able to do the job. You know, just a matter of um, you know giving us that uh, confidence, that trust. Uh, and um, uh, we'll make sure that. Uh... Yeah. 
I think can you can you hear me well? Yeah. Yeah, it is breaking, but I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I think I think it's essential in my opinion. I think I would like to see more players like you, you know, African players going back to contribute to the African football because you are not looking only to the business side. So what must many times the problem in Africa is that there is many people that were never involved in football and they are looking more for the business side and not for the football there to grow. And you guys, you had a, a great career, you know, so you are not looking only to the business side. You are actually looking to develop the, the football in your country. So it will be great to see references like uh, like you. Yeah, and, uh, we are... We are... Well, yeah. always um, available, you know. I, I am looking forward to to working with uh, the Nigerian uh, Football Federation and, um, yeah, see what the possibilities are. If they give me a job, and um, I'll be able to work to develop players also. Yeah. So, for example, do you think that um, the example of Ajax Academy can be a good inspiration for the African academies, for example? Do you think the, um, it can be a good example? Yeah, of course, of course, you know. Um, the academies over there, they are doing a good job, but um, it's, it's not enough, you know. We need more. Uh, mm. And then they need to compete a lot, you know. Compete yeah. more and make mm. sure get these players ready for tournaments. Yeah, you know, exactly. That's the only way you can bring up these players, teach them the modern football. And uh, we are, I, I am willing to do that, you know. But, um, just have to wait to make, uh, to make sure that things are put in place so that uh, when you're going back, you know there are a lot of guarantees yeah. for you to work, you know. Yeah, good, yeah. Good do, do you do you also think that um, in your opinion that um, one thing that uh, happens in Africa unfortunately is that many players are are getting lost because um, many talents are lost because there um, there are they suffer of a lot of unfulfilled promises from people that only want to get money as we mentioned before do you think it's something that should be controlled by for example by FIFA that um that because it's something bigger bigger than sport we are talking about human beings before you are a player you are a human being so many times you see a talent in africa and they just want we all tell it's diamond players you know but um but there is many people involved to try to get their money or to try to just to put them in europe and they don't give them the the necessary conditions do you think that should be something that should be better controlled. Yeah, I think so. I think so. It's um, up to the, the the federation of that country or every country to uh, to get the rules and regulations yeah. in place so that um, the agents are not just going to lie to the players and take them somewhere or tell them something that is not true and um, you know or try to get money out of them. Um, is the, every country has to come up with you know rules and regulations to control that you know yeah um, you know sometimes you know these young players they only think about making the money immediately and um, they they are willing to go to any country and uh, sometimes you go to some countries you find out that uh, what you are told is not what you what you see. Yeah, and uh, from there their career goes down, you know. So um, they should they should you know come up with uh, rules, you know, strict rules and regulations so that uh, it will protect these young players. Yeah, completely, completely, for sure. And uh, and uh, because like like we said, this is about also the person, not only about the football player, you know, and not waste the talent. Just exactly. because of some promises or, or some money, so do you think that um, in in your in your opinion and um, and you had an experience as a coach in for Mallorca, as you said, 
And um, do you think it's important, and also as a former player, do you see that scouting is very important inside the industry? And do you think it's essential on these days, in your opinion? Of course, scouting is important, you know, but um, yeah, it depends, you know. Scouting is different from agents. You hear me? The problem, the problem is uh, some agents, you know, that are looking for their own benefits, you know, tell the player this because they want that quick money. I'll take you to this country, I'll take you to that country. But the players are not even looking at what club they are going to. You know, so the problem has been um, the agents, you know. Um, scouting is important. It's important in every every aspect of uh, uh, player selection and, um, you know, talents. But um, the other part is where we have the problem, you know, the agents. Yeah. You know, um, how, do you con how do you control that? I don't know. They have to come up with a, a very yeah. strict um, rules. Completely. So that, um, yeah, that will restrict all these um, agents from doing what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. But uh, the scouting in this part, of course, you need to control the agents. That's very important. But, but for example... Uh, a good agent should also have a scouting a scouting department, for example, working for them. Because uh, that this is why I was asking you if you believe that scouting is important, the context. Because, for example, that um, the scouting must be something very honest and uh, the scout needs to understand also the better context for the player. Uh, for example, in your case... You went to a country where it's English, where they speak English, where they give the opportunities for the players. So each player is different. So the adaptation is crucial for the players. Uh, also to choose a club uh, that, like we said, that can teach to the young players and and um, is not only expecting for immediate results uh, because there are the reality is very different and um, and you know. And if you are patient with the players, especially like we are saying, talented players from Africa, if you are patient with them, if you teach them, you know that in the future that you will have great values for the clubs. But what is happening is they want everything fast. And uh, if it is not working, they just bring others. And that's it. So scouting, it might be very important also for the agents, you know, because if you have, if you are, if you are an agent of a club, uh, of sorry, of a player, I believe that you want to be. It needs to be long term, you know. Uh, if the player is eighteen, you want to be. You know, you want to build his career until he's thirty four or thirty five. You know, you just you don't want yeah. just to to earn once. You know, you need to do the path with, with together with him. You know, so maybe that's that's the problem. What what is happening? Um, and that's yeah, why it's, yeah, yeah. Scouting is important, but uh, as you you rightly know. Uh, football is business. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. True. It's all that's despite the fact that uh, you you want a good player, uh, is business. Most people think football is just okay, it's fun, and no, it's it's moving a lot of money. It's a lot of money, you know. UEFA, um, Champions League, and uh, Europa League. Um, this is this is a, a money venture business, you know. But um, um, as you rightly said, um, things should be taken care of, you know. Scouting, uh, they should work hand in hand, you know, with the agent, you know. But how do you do that? How do you do that? Who controls that? That is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know? that, that, I, am I am I am I be an, am I be an agent today? Who is going to control me? Yeah. So that, that is the problem. That's true. That's that true. Problem. Yeah, there are good and bad agents. Not all the agents are bad, I believe. But uh, but if you do the things properly, you know, they should advise the player properly. We have here a question from um, first from, from Mario. Hello, Mario. So um, it says, hi, Nuno and George. Question for George, uh, obviously. Uh, which coach in your career left the best impact on you? 
Um, best impact. Ooh. <laughs> Mm, impacted me maybe uh, I would say maybe Vangal yeah well I think it's it's we all need to understand that that choice you know I think I think Vangal leaves a, a very great impact on everyone even 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 for for Jose Mourinho it was a big impact, you know, because Mourinho was his assistant. <laughs> so, so yeah. the great coaches worked with him. So, so of course he's, he's a he's a great he's a great a great manager. Of course, he's not managing anymore. And uh, and luckily we we have him here living in Portugal. I don't know if you know, he lives in, in, in at the Algarve. So he chose Portugal to live, and I'm based in Portugal. So after he retired, who is the who is living in Portugal? Louis van Gaal. Oh, he's, yeah. he's not living in Holland? No, 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 no. We always said when oh. he was <laughs> retired, he wanted to, look, to go to Algarve, to the Algarve to live, you know? I think, wow. I think it's the same reason why he also didn't like Holland. It's the winter, you know? I think he wanted a nice weather. And uh, it shows, like uh, you already said a few years ago, he was going to move to, to the Algarve, and uh, and he did it. So he finished his career, and he, he chose Algarve. So maybe Finity, we also need you in Portugal, not to finish career, but <laughs> but but uh, but to be a coach in here. So um, we also have another question from Henry, Henry Williams. Thank you, Henry, for your question. I don't know. My question to George is that uh, why. Is waiting to get a job first. He can take a lead without being offered a job, uh, helping to shape the development via coaching, education, players, all that is needed at the top level. Um, so yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't know how, how does that work. I should be doing it for free, or I don't know. <laughs> well, just uh, helping shape the yeah, development. Yeah, we are. We are, we are talking about uh, it's a multi multi billion dollar uh, 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 um, uh, how am I going to put it uh, yeah, business yeah, yeah. it's about business so I should go to a club and I should be I should be working to develop players for free no no not with your so no, I, I, not, I, not, yeah. I, I don't know if that that is the question but um, yeah you have to be employed to do to do to do a job. Course, like so I, cannot just, I cannot just go to I cannot go to a club and say okay I want to work with you I want to to do everything free because I would like the game I want to develop players nobody's going to do that of course so, especially, yeah, especially with your career no with your experience you have experience yeah. to pass you know you've been a professional for many years not just someone that wants to come to football now you, you know exactly like, exactly yeah exactly. So, <laughs> so what 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 do I, if yeah there there must be an arrangement you know if okay you develop players uh, once the player make first team okay then we will pay you there must be there must be uh, yeah an agreement on something you know I don't, I cannot just go and say okay I'm 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 sitting down and uh, okay what. Well, yeah. What Henry is saying, like uh, he had like uh, another another uh, message in here. He said, "Yeah, uh, but um, for example, setting up an academy will be a starting point." For example, have you ever thought? I know Emmanuel Lamonic have his, his academy. For example, have you ever thought to have your own academy? Yeah, I, I cannot because uh, I, I live I live here in Europe. Uh, I cannot just. I, I know Ima has a, a, an academy in Nigeria, and uh, yeah. he, he has people that are doing it, doing a good job for him. But um, yeah, if I don't have people that I can trust to to run that academy, then um, yeah, there's no point doing it. You know, it's I an academy. That's... You have to develop players, but at at the, at the same time, you have to pay people that are, are coaching that uh, are running the program for you. So you must have people that you trust that will do a good job and um, at the end of the day, you'll be paying them. So yeah, exactly. I don't have 
I don't have this kind of uh, trust to other people to do the academy. So I'm not going to put my money in 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 a in a, in a business that uh, is not going to be run properly because I don't I don't have the time. I don't yeah, have the time. And the money and your name, your reputation, no, because it's yes, your yes. And uh, and I think you are being very honest and uh, straight to the point. Like like you said, it's very important. You are not just. Uh, Otherwise, you were just creating another business in Africa to get money, but you want to do the things properly, you know? Like if you are doing is to develop. Yeah. It's not just to have an academy and make money, you know? Like this is going yeah, yeah. what you were saying before, you know? And it's very important in, in, in football, especially, you know, your integrity. And to be honest with yourself, if you do it, you do it properly, you know? It's not... Um, It's not just do it. Yes, if I if I if I have the time to do it to be there because here in Europe I cannot do it. An academy is not going to work. Yeah. Uh, but in Nigeria, definitely, if you do it, you do it very well. You have the space. Uh, you get your license. You can you can do it very well. But you must have the time also. You must dedicate your time to do it properly and develop players. You know, if you put it in hands of people and they don't do it well. And it's all is is of no use, you know. Yeah. So that, that already exists. Um, that is no. why. That is, yeah. That yeah. is why. Not just do 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 something for just doing it, you know. Do it for a purpose. And um, exactly. I don't I don't have the time to go and and sit down in Nigeria and um, be running the academy, you know. So uh, better I don't do it. Maybe in the future I might do it, but for now. Mm. Um, I don't think so. Of course, that's that's very straight to the point, spot on. Thank you. And uh, so the other thing is, like, do you think also sometimes it can be a problem? Like, um, when when an African player comes to Europe, he finds, in general, he finds like a completely different reality, especially in the you know in the first world countries like like England, like Holland, like Germany. They find completely different, different kind of uh, of surround the people that surround them are can be the wrong people. They can can lead them to wrong decisions. The culture is different. The the kind of the lifestyle is different, and talent by itself is not not is not enough. It's also important to have a strong mentality, and uh, and that is a key aspect that I think when I followed your career, I think you always had. And as you and as people can see by by our conversation, that you have a strong character and uh, you also have a strong mentality. Do you think it's also important? And most of all, like like you answered in the last question, you have your feet on the ground. You know, like uh, do you think that's very important for for a player when it comes from a different reality? And we have a big example in these days, like Sadio Mane, that is is a is a player that. Uh, seems like a humble player keeps his feet on the ground you know and is achieving great things so he's not like just looking for the the glamour of, of a football player in europe uh, and is it seems like when you are surrounded by the right people you are more on the way to have success you know so do you think that's yeah. very important that the player before he comes to europe He, he could, for example, an academy can also teach him the, what he's going to find in here. And it's something that's a work that guys like you can do because you've been living that, that um, you've been living. Yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. So. No, it's, it's, it's true, it's true. Uh, you know, most players, they don't tell them what they, they, they will experience in Europe. Once they come to Europe, they don't tell them what they're going to experience what to expect, you know, so yeah. um, it's always good to let them know if you're going to Germany, you might experience this, this is how the league is, this is how, you know, let them have an idea of what, where they're going to and the, uh, the ups and downs they, they're going to they're gonna experience, you know, sometimes it's good for them to know before they get there. Yeah. And if you don't know, and you, you just go there, you're taking unawares and then uh, sometimes you you find out that uh, they start having problems of adaptation you know yeah. so 
uh, yeah, we 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 are willing to do that, you know, but uh, how do we do it? You know, I cannot just walk up to the academies in Nigeria and say, okay, you have this player, you have that player. This is, you know, uh, yeah, we can do it, but um, we must be called upon. They must invite us to come and, you know, even have a talk with the players. You know, that I yeah. think uh, I'm willing to do. Go have a chat with the players, tell them. Sometimes um, you go to Europe and then you walk your way up, you know. You must yeah. know where you're coming from and uh, gradually build your way and to to a star player. You know, sometimes you, you go there and it doesn't happen immediately. You see, Mane, 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 Mane was playing for a smaller club before Liverpool bought him over, you know, because he was doing a good job over there. Yeah. And so sometimes... Uh, you 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 take one step back and to go to go two step forward, you know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you just have to advise these players and uh, so that they understand, you know, not just rushing into I want to go to Europe, I want to go to Europe, and then they get disappointed when they don't they don't make it. You know? So I, I I'm willing to do that, give advice, and uh, you know, uh, yeah. I think I think that's these young players, but uh, yeah, that will be wonderful because you know, like you are not just um, you are an idol, you know, like uh, and you you've been experiencing that. And uh, yeah. a while ago, I, I had the privilege to interview Paulo Futre, that was a great great Portuguese player that uh, played for Atlético Madrid, and he said um, he said a key thing that uh, that I always remember. He said for a young player. The when the first time he tests, if he keeps his feet on the ground, is when he gives his first autograph, you know. And um, he believes that f most of the teams, if you see now in Europe, they have the old legends, you know, the, um, the former players, um, there yeah. to advise a player, you know, to advise how it is to give the first autograph or to take the first self in these days, or uh, when you arrive to Europe, how it will be, so that. That can be that can be very important, and it's a uh, it's a job that the academies or the clubs should do. Because one thing is to have a psychologist is important, but when when we all been you know young and we know that we don't listen so much uh, psychologists like we listen our idols you know or or players that been in such a high level you know so the academies should invest more in those kind of people inviting them. You know, sharing their experience, and it's what we are also here doing on Soccer Hub with these webinars for people to be able players and managers also to understand that part. What is um, what we believe that that is important, and um, we are almost yeah. finished. Okay, so we could stay here a long time talking, and uh, because you have many many things to to say for sure. But um, but we, we we are finishing. We are running out of time. So how do we see the fact? I can't hear you. Hello. Can you. Can you hear me now, Finidi? Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay, it's it's, it's much better. Yeah. Hello. Uh, you see, you see the reason why you need to move to Portugal. So. Yeah. What? Do you see the reason why you you must move? You said to what? <laughs> I said, do you see the, the reason why you should move to Portugal? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we lost again. See, guys, this is what um, technology is great, allow us to, to do these interviews, but also um, these kind of things happen. So, um, Henry, I hope that uh, that you had the, the answer, you know, like, like, you, like you've been asking. And um, there is, we are almost finishing. Let's just wait for Finidi just to ask two last questions, and uh, and that's it. And in the meantime, you can see, you can check also. There is the the link you can save to to check later our courses, and we have also new courses uh, available for for all of you guys. And um, yeah, let's see. He's coming back. Let's just wait a bit. Just wait one minute. If not, we finish here. 
and uh, and we all have another opportunity to, to speak to Finity. Yeah, so I believe it's better to, to finish. So thank you, thank you all for, for being watching again. And um, I also uh, inform that, as you know, you can watch again or send to your friends, share also this interview if you think um, it was good. So you can watch on YouTube, on Facebook, and on, on the social media, on our platforms, on LinkedIn also. And, um, and thank you for being with us. So see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.